So I thought what I might do is make up a little board to go on top of the Arduino and then I can mount the 80 tiny 85 chip on here and I can use this board as a programmer so I could just plug this into the Uno and then plug the chip into a socket on this board and it will save all the wires messing about with wires like we had to do before because I'm probably going to want to keep reprogramming the chip so I thought I'd use um, one of these little uh, green boards that I bought before. I can't imagine what I'm going to use them for, so I might as well use them for something. I thought I could put this on, across here, put some um, headers on here so it can plug on, and then just chop this off short so it's sort of a nicer fit. But I have actually got a few different sizes of these green boards, and it might be worthwhile using uh, a larger one because... We could also program the 80 tiny 84 chip and also possibly even the um, 80 mega 328 chip, which is the this chip here. So maybe we could actually put sockets on for all three of those chips on the same programmer, possibly. I'm not sure about how the connections will work. So I've got this one. It would have the similar issue. It's too wide. I'll have to chop it down. But I think this one here might be quite a good candidate. That would fit on there like that. I mean, I could even not bother cutting it down, but I think I probably would just cut the edges off. And it looks like it might be the exact width we need to go in those headers here and here. So it would just be a case of cutting the, the edges of the board off. But then again, I could just leave it because it actually gives me something to get hold of to pull it back out again. So I think I'll solder some headers on here as a starting point. Okay, so I've soldered it on. On this side, I've actually managed to get access to every single pin. There's one on the end there that's not connected. My board wasn't quite wide enough to accommodate that. But I don't think that's actually used for anything. Not really sure why it's there. It doesn't have any uh, name on the, no labeling on the pin. So I'm not sure what it's used. I'm pretty sure it's normally marked as not connected. So I don't think we need that. A bit odd that it's even there. Um, but on this side, something really weird that the designers of the Arduino did is they made this non-standard space here between the two headers. So it means they're not exactly on a 0.1 inch pitch. So I've kind of even got a choice to either connect up these ones or connect up these ones. I've gone with the uh, higher ones here. So it'll attach on like this. So you can see I'm using these pins here. Again, these ones I couldn't reach because my board's not wide enough. Um, I could have mounted the board further over that way and, and made use of those. Again, I don't think we need to use the N2. It's just the A ref and a ground that we're missing. We've already got grounds on this side, so for this board it's fine. Other boards it, it might be a bit of a bit of a shame, but um, that's what I've gone with. Um, it does mean I can't access these lower pins here which again is a shame because they've got the serial interface there which might have been nice to have access to. Um, we don't need it for programming though. I think for programming we only need a few pins here and the uh, 5 volt and ground. So I think this is uh, more than adequate for a, a programmer. So I think the next step is to get some sockets on here, see how many sockets I can fit on there and then have a think about wiring things together. So I've also sold on a little LED there so we can run the blink sketch on this if we want to. Um, I've only put the 8 pin socket on for now. So what my plan is, the reason why I've positioned it over in one corner is I'm going to put the 28 pin socket in here for the 328 chip and a 14 pin socket in here for the 80 tiny 84 chip which I think is a 14 pin chip. So we should be able to get all three sockets on here. This is my messy wiring on the back. Um, it's always very difficult to use these um, green proto boards. I, I don't actually like them that much. So that should go on here. Remember which way round it goes. It goes that way round. It should plug on the top there like that so it's reasonably neat. 
So I've got a brand new sketch here. So if I start with a const int pin, and I'm going to use pin three because um, I used pin zero before, but we're using pin zero to program the chip. So I'm going to go with another pin so we avoid any conflicts with the programmer. Then I'm going to have another int called on time. And that's actually going to be an array of three elements. And we're going to put in there 250. 250 and 750. I'm going to have another int called off time. And I'm going to set that to 250. So these are just going to be my timings for how long the LED is on and how long the LED is off. So we go into our setup and define the pin mode for our pin to be output and then the main loop I'm going to have a for loop for int i equals zero i is less than or equal to two i plus plus so that's just going to loop between zero and two so there are three elements in our array, 0, 1, and 2. So we're just going to loop through them. We'll do a digital write a pin. And we're going to say hi. So that will turn the LED on. And we'll have a delay of our on time, i. Then we'll do a digital write. pin low, turn the LED off, and a delay of our off time. And that's it. So it should loop through our array and blink the LED with our specific timings. So if we upload that, you can see the LED blinking at the standard rate at the moment. I'll click upload, saving, it wants me to save it, let me just save that, compiling sketch, and you can see that works, so that's awesome, um, we've got it blinking one, two, three, one, two, three, which is short, short, long, short, short, long which corresponds to the 250, 250, 750 times that we programmed in. So I'm confident that that works. Um, quite pleased with that. So we've got ourselves a little programmer board now. So every time we want to program the chip, we don't have to mess around with those wires. We just plug it into here, program it, upload the program, and then just transfer the chip to whatever project we want it in. So that'll do for now. Um, sometime in the future, I will add the additional sockets for the other two chips and see if we can actually get them to program as well so we can have like a universal programming board. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.